Hey everybody, Matt from Eastwood here doing a live tech session on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, for any of you guys that haven't watched one of these before, I like to make it really interactive and uh, we do Q&A for you. So we have Scott, our lead tech advisor over here. Yeah, how you guys doing? So yeah, I'll be on uh, Facebook, I'll be on YouTube, so you guys can ask your questions there, I can answer you. We can shoot them over to Matt and get you answered live during the video so you know what's going on. So uh, today we're going to be doing a little bit of, uh, I guess you could say, advanced B-rolling uh, techniques and we're going to be showing you uh, how to replicate a part on, I have a just an old door, an old Model T uh, Roadster door I had out of my pile of parts here and the bottom of this door is pretty rotten along here and it actually has some fiberglass repairs that are in it even though the paint looks kind of shiny there's kind of a mess in the bottom of this so I thought this would be a good representation of something you could do um, for making a, a small detailed part and uh, we're going to show you how to recreate this bead as if you were doing a bottom patch here. Uh, now the, the difficult part with this is the bead on this or, the, or the, the pressed in body line here, it's not just a standard size bead so you can't just grab a bead uh, out of one of our die sets and it's just going to be the one that works. It has a little bit of a step to it, uh, the way it ramps up and uh, it's, a, it's quite a bit wider than any of the other uh, dies that we offer. So I'm going to show you a process for making something like this. A couple extra steps, but with using our forming dies and then also our 8-inch. Uh, it's a brand new bead roller we just came out with. So this is our elite 8-inch heavy-duty bead roller. Um, it's good up to, so it's 8-inch it's throat, but you can do up to a 16-inch panel if you go to the center. Uh, it's good to 18-gauge. Uh, it comes with a set of these step dies that are here that it normally come in our, our, um, in our forming die kit. And it also comes with, let's sit down here, a set of uh, 3 8 whoops, uh, it comes with a set of 3 8 uh, bead dies. So it's just a standard 3 8 bead, so which is pretty common for doing fours and stuff like that. So between the two of these sets of dies, you can pretty much do uh, the good majority of, of uh, projects that you may need. So uh, I'm gonna be showing you making this patch here for the center. And I just have a small part uh, to, you know, that we can show you live real quick. So we're going to take it from a flat piece here to uh, a patch that you can fit yourself. So uh, I have um, laid out here, I already laid out the lines. A lot of that is the time, uh, the time involved in this project. A lot of it's laying out the, uh, the beads and your lines for how you're running it and making notes for yourself. So I took a bunch of measurements. We already shot a longer length video earlier today that we're going to be putting on our YouTube channel. Uh, so make sure you subscribe there um, that you can get that video, but we'll show the whole process, including laying out the lines and everything. So what I have here, this, this process, the first thing I'm going to be doing, I have some notes for myself, this top line here, we're going to be stepping this whole entire area up here down. It's, it's set down. Um, if you look at the door here, you can see it's, it's stepped down if you're looking at it. So we step up for the bead or the panels set in on this whole entire uh, perimeter here. This is set in. So we're going to be doing that first. So normally when you run these, I'm going to walk over the bead roller here. Uh, normally when you're running with the step dies, the most common thing to do is put the bead, the, uh, the dies, so that they are loosen this one so you can kind of see here. So you would normally put them so they're pretty much touching each other like that so that the, uh, the two sections um, they touch there and they make a step that's exactly like what's in the die. So that's the most common way to use this. There's actually a lot of other um, really neat ways you can use this if you start uh, playing around with these dies. So what I'm going to do is push the bottom die all the way in until it touches the a little shoulder on, on the piece here, on the, uh, on the shaft. And what I'm going to do on the other side here is, so I want to step this section down. So I'm going to line up my bottom line here, which is our bend line, but it's also the bottom of our bead. So I'm going to be lining that up with the die, the inside die. And what I'm going to do is actually slide, and I'll just tighten the shaft up a little bit so it doesn't move around on us while I'm showing you guys. So I'm going to actually move this outside die way out here. So I know it looks a little crazy, you know, compared to what you normally see if you look in the instructions, but this is kind of the neat part of these, these step dies and the forming dies is that you can, there's really no rules. So I'm going to 
try and move over so I can get lined up a little better here. I'm going to let Joe get a shot. But, um, so what I do is I line the bottom die up, center of the bottom die up with my bend line and the top center of the top die in the, where the step or the, or the bead will start. So I got that pretty lined up. I'm going to try and carefully not bump this. And I'm going to oop, snug that up. We'll check it one more time here. So it moved just a little bit. So we're going to. So this is pretty crucial because you got to get these dies set just right so that they line up here. So this is pretty, this is going to be kind of throughout the whole project, we're going to be following these lines. So I got them lined up now. So the center of the high part of the top die is centered in my uh, Sharpie line. And the bottom, center of the high part of the bottom die is, is centered as well. So now that we have those centered, what I can do is I'm going to, I have it just snug in the back so it kind of, I can still tighten this by hand here. So I'm going to bring it down till it touches. So I can feel there's some, some tension there. I'm going to take the panel out and go two turns deeper. So that's going to force the panel to have a step to it. Tighten this guy up here. And again, if you have any questions, um, you can shoot them over to Scott and uh, Scott can answer them for you. Now the nice thing, this, this Elite Bead Roller, the eight inch version is really nice because I can do all this by myself. Um, so I can kind of go at the speed that I want. Oops, almost went the wrong way while I'm talking here. So I'm going to feed this in. You're going to put a little upward pressure on the outside here. And since we know that inside die is going to stay where it's at, I just watch the top die. And since I'm running everything, you don't have to worry about your your helper going too fast or bumping it or something like that. You can just move it yourself as you want. So we put, uh, we'll show on the bench here, if we can get a shot. You can see that just, we got a little step going here in the panel and Joe, will get, he's getting set up here so you can see. Uh, so you can see I got a little step going here. So this is the start of our bead. And this is what we're, this is just the start of this here. So we got this end is starting to go up in the direction we want, but I want to go further. So the key is you got to uh, do this in a couple of steps. So I'm going to go uh, a bit deeper now and we should be able to get our second pass uh, to get the depth that I want. So I'm going to loosen up here and go another like two and a half turns here. Snug that up. Any questions, Scott, before I uh, roll the next one? Not right now. Questions, but one of the things I can point out while you're getting ready to roll is the fact that, you know, that, like you said, it's perfect for one person getting into the, uh, you know, bead rolling. You know, having that four point uh, kind of handle allows you to just pull a little bit at a time. You don't ever get, you know, when you're by yourself at a spot where, you know, it's kind of awkward. It's absolutely perfect for that and kind of gets your feet wet. Um, and in the future, I mean, it has a 22 millimeter shaft, so it's going to use all of the forming dies that we sell. So certainly you're not limited at all by using this machine. No, no, not at all. Yeah, and that's what we're going to show in a bit. We're going to show you guys the, uh, I'm going to actually use two of the dies from the forming die kit here, um, which is nice. So I'm going to check this. We'll try and speed up a little bit here so I'm not taking too long. So I am, I'll flip around so Joe can get here. So that's pretty good there. We're, we're, again, this is one of these instances where when you're doing, uh, doing metal shaping or metal fabricating sheet metal work, sometimes you have to over ex extend a piece or over stretch it or whatever because you know what's going to happen in the future. So I went further than we need to be. So the panel is actually up off of the bead in the bottom here. But that's going to be corrected as we start working the panel and it comes around. So I actually wanted to step it up further than needed. So that's pretty much it for the step die, now that we have that where we need it. Now I could swap out the dies here. Um, and we're going to put in the, so I'll loosen these guys here. 
And like uh, Scott mentioned, this, is, uh, this has the four-point handle. It also has the 22-millimeter shafts. So if you have one of our larger bead rollers uh, that we've sold for years, uh, this will fit all the same dies. Uh, this, especially for a panel like this, uh, it's really nice. If you're doing a small panel and you are by yourself, if you try and use one of our larger throat bead rollers, you just can't reach the handle to get it to, uh, to actually do what you want. So it's better to have a smaller bead roller like this because you have the control for doing some of this edge work or you know, uh, something that's not in quite as big of a panel. Most of the work I do with a bead roller is, is uh, edge work. So it's kind of perfect because a lot of times I don't really need the throat of a larger bead roller. So I'm putting the lower soft wheel on here and I have our, our largest uh, rounding or tipping die that's on there. Uh, again, it, the, the names are just a suggestion. You can do kind of whatever you want with it. So what I'm going to do here is let this touch. And what we need to do because the, the bead in the door is uh, kind of rounded uh, we need to put, uh, what I'm going to try and do to, to make that happen is I'm going to create a peak in the center of this panel. So when you flip it upside down, I ran a line down the center on the, on the bottom. I, I ran a line down the center of where the bead is going to be in the panel. And what I'm going to do is run, a, run this die with some pressure on it through this and it's going to force a peak into the bead which then when we're all set and done, will give it that rounded look that we would get if we had a custom die or if this was pressed like this. Um, this is a way that you can get that. So I'm gonna tighten this down into the soft wheel. And we actually wanna press into the soft wheel a bit because we're trying to press up in the panel. So the nice thing with using the soft die is uh, it gives it kind of a subdued or, or it's not a sh as sharp of a, uh, of a bead, it's going to give it more of a rounded effect to it, uh, which is nice. So oh, I'm going to go over here. Let's make sure. Bend. I look at my notes. This is the hardest part when you get all these. There we go. Bead. So I'm going to line up my, my line here that's going to be the peak of our bead. And I'm going to run this through right on the center of that die. Again, because I'm operating this bead roller, I can really focus. And if you get, once you get your beads started, a lot of times if you're running straight beads like this, you don't have to do much with the panel, but just guide it. So you just make sure it's kind of finding its course. And you can run it. And with the, the four post handle like this, I can just keep moving and I don't have to search for the handle. So we, uh, we got our peak here. Oop. Go over here. Sorry. Trying to not get my back to the camera there. So we'll get out for Joe to get the, there we go. So what I did is I created, so we're looking at the top, the, the face of this panel here. I created a peak right here in the center. So when we round this all over in the end, that peak's going to help us give that rounded appearance. So again, you got to think a couple steps ahead to get this, but this peak is going to help us in the end. So now that we got that peak established in there, we can use the same exact dies in the bead roller that we have, and I'm going to run on this, be this bend line here, and we're going to tip the panel up using this wide, um, the widest um, upper wheel here. So I'm going to let some pressure off of this wheel here because we're since we're tipping we don't need to press into the panel as much we just want to we're kind of using it as for leverage when you're tipping with the bead roller so I just let the bead roller uh, the top die just touch the soft bottom wheel and I just put a little like maybe half a crank or a quarter crank to put pressure into that bottom wheel we're not really like pressing so much as we are just uh, just clamping the part in. So I'm going to go on the bottom again and we're going to start tipping uh, our panel up here. So now I'm going to go on my bend line and I'm going to center it right here. And I'm going to get it just inside of the, once I get it started we're going to start pushing up on the panel here. You can see I'm putting a little bit of pressure 
Now you don't want to try and make the, a 90 degree bend in one pass. You're going you're to start slipping out of the wheel or it's going to make the soft lower wheel want to walk just because of the, all the pressure. So go through in a couple of passes depending on the metal. Uh, you may need to do three, four passes depending on or <clears throat> even your skill level. You can just do it as many times as you want. Sometimes you can just run a pass through with almost no pressure and it will score. So we'll flip around here. So this is after one pass. We're getting, uh, we're starting to tip this, this bead up uh, or the uh, corner around. And right in there is where we're starting to get that, that to fold over. So because we're using this, this uh, kind of wide rounded uh, tipping die, it's going to give us a nice gentle curve when it curves underneath, which is what we need to create this bead. So I'm going to run this through a couple more times pretty quickly here so we can keep moving. Um, again, if you have any questions, shoot them over to Scott. And Scott, if, you ha if they have any, I'm happy to answer them while I'm tipping here. Any questions, Scott? No, not right That's now. That's a no. We're, we're, they're too busy enthralled with what you're doing. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's the case. We're not boring them here. But uh, this is a way that you can create, you can create wider beads than what a be what the standard dies do. This is a nice way to do that. Um, so again, I ran through. I have it pushed up almost. It's basically touching that top die now. So we're pretty much at the I'm going to run through one more time. We're pretty much at the max of what this, you know, what we can do. Because there's some deflection in the metal, you know, we have some spring backs. So you're not going to get a true 90. But you can see once I got that, that uh, line set in the panel, I can move pretty quickly uh, to create that 90. So I'm going to jump around here with the uh, hammer and dolly and just uh, quick give it a couple little taps to just get that edge. Closer to 90. And I'm not, I'm not hammering real hard on it. You can see I'm just tapping, putting pressure on the lower dolly, uh, on the dolly against this bottom edge where we were folding it. And that's just helping it complete that, that bend so we're a little closer to 90. I think this panel actually is a little under 90 uh, on the original door. So we'll leave it right there and uh, we'll check it here on the door for you guys. And uh, hopefully we'll get Joe to get in there and see what's going on. So now you'll notice that when he gets in there, there, there is still a peak in the panel that you can see. So I want to get just a little more definition, if you will, in this peak before we uh, adjust it. So I'm going to run it through one more time upside down through the center there just to get a little bit more in it. And I may actually run kind of adjacent to it too, um, right there to get that, that bead. But you can see it's fitting real nice. We got basically the same exact shape. We just got this peak that's a little sharp there, which I can show you how to um, correct real quickly, but I'm going to run this through one more time through the center upside down and then uh, we'll hit it and pretty much be done. So last, last chance for questions here in a, in a second. And while you're setting it up, I actually apologize to the viewers. There were a couple questions that came through. I couldn't see. We actually lost internet for a while. Uh, oh, okay. And I got it back up and running now. Cool. Um, so we can get them taken care of. One, I think I know the answer to, but I'll let you answer just in case. They're curious what gauge metal you're working with. Uh, right here, I'm actually using, I'm using 20 gauge for this sample today. Uh, you want to match what you're using, what the vehicle had originally or as close as possible. Uh, a lot of older cars like this technically use 19 gauge steel, which isn't really easy to get. So 18 gauge is probably the best to use uh, because by the time you sand your weld and sand everything down, you drop down to that 19 gauge in the end. Uh, if you're working on a more modern car, uh, modern as in not early 1900s. Uh, it may have 20 gauge steel for body panels. So this is, uh, this is a peach for, piece from our patch panel kit. Uh, and this is a piece that I cut out of our patch panel kit that's 20 gauge that allows you to make patches just like this. Good question. 
Any, uh, do you have any other ones? Is that it? I'm just kind of scrolling through here. Now I got it back up and running again, trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. You know, somebody asked, where can I get one at? Eastwood.com. Yeah, uh, Eastwood. Definitely deck. a place to grab one of them. I'll drop the link in just a little bit for you here. Yeah, so you can get this on, on the Eastwood website. We just got these in. So uh, this has uh, been, been popular every time we've posted about it on social media. Uh, it's been pretty popular. So I imagine if it stays as much interest as we've been getting, it's probably going to sell really quickly. Yeah, you've been teasing it for a little while. Yeah, so uh, again, the really nice thing is you can use all the dies from your larger bead roller um, you can use with this. So if you already bought the forming die kit or you already have one of our uh, flame cut, you know, original bead rollers, those are, uh, those will work just fine with this. So I put another, I'll put a little more definition into it. So what I'm going to do to knock down that, uh, that little bit of a peak that's a little too sharp is I'm just going to use our little two inch. Again, this is another new product that is awesome. I've been using this like crazy at home. Uh, it's a two inch orbital sander and it has the, um, the Velcro pads on it. So you can stick on a little two inch sanding sandpaper there. I have 120 on here today, uh, but you, we have a bunch of different grits you can get. But this is really nice because it's like a, basically like a mini DA because um, it, it is an orbital sander. So you can, uh, you can do some of this fine tuning or finesse work really easily with it. So what I'm going to do is go over that, that sharp kind of peak and just try and deaden it by just knocking down just a, just a hair. So I could spend a little more time on it uh, to get it exactly how I want, but that, that knocked it down real quick. I'm not taking a lot of material off. All we're kind of doing is taking the sharpness out of that, that peak we put in the panel uh, to give us uh, the look that we're going for. And I'm going to flop around here so you guys can kind of see what we got going there. So it fits up pretty good. Like I said, I can deaden this this peak just a little bit more with the DA. I could even drop down to maybe 80 grit to, to make it go a little quicker, but I don't want to sand too much material off. So using the 120, with that little two inch orbital is really nice because it's really controlled. It has a progressive trigger. As you could hear, I could kind of keep it nice and low speed or I could speed it up. Um, and, but you can see this lines up really nice. It fits, folds down under. We can trim this little bit of excess on the bottom. I left it a little long there so we can trim the fit to match the rest of the door. And that's how you could do a patch uh, for a door like this and make a bead that you don't already have a die for. Uh, so that's, that's that part. That's a pretty quick process once you get it all laid out. Um, any, any other questions? We actually don't right now. And again, I have to apologize, guys. I'm really having connectivity issues today. So hopefully we've gotten most of them. Um, <laughs> I've dropped links. So, you know, certainly a lot yeah. of stuff's on the website too. We have some good videos and you know, Matt does a nice job being able to show how this tool really works and showcasing the full potential of it. Yeah, so we can, and if there's any questions, we'll, we'll check them afterwards uh, just to make sure if, we, if there's any that got missed, myself or, or Randy or, or Scott will jump on and we can, we can answer you guys uh, through the messages or through the, uh, the comments as well. This is a piece, if anybody's wondering, I just showed you guys how to make a sample piece uh, for the center here. Uh, I figured we'd have somebody that might ask about the corners. To do this piece out of corner, the, with the corners in one part is quite a lot more work because a lot starts happening here. I roughed in a piece yesterday 
uh, to make this same exact prop process. I have some notes here where I need to put this on the uh, on the planishing hammer or the shrinker, or I'm sorry, the, on the wheel, English wheel, to uh, get it fine-tuned. But same thing, stepped it up. We have the little rounded uh, bead, and that will fit in on the bottom of this door here, and we can keep working it. So same process just takes a lot longer because when you start uh, running a, such a severe uh, step bead in a panel around corners, uh, it gets pretty advanced, and you have to do a lot more uh, tapping around with the hammer and dolly and, and uh, also using the wheel or the planishing hammer. But again, this was all done with the bead roller uh, and then I did the shrinker stretcher and some other uh, hammer dolly work to get it roughed in. But uh, you can do pretty much anything you could think of if you start swapping around dies. Uh, you can do that with the forming die kit. And again, if you're doing edge work, the 8 inch elite uh, bead roller is really, really nice. I mean, you guys could see how easily I was able to just by myself roll a panel and as long as you can hold the panel yourself and control it, uh, there's no reason to have a really big bead roller uh, that you'd lug out uh, that you can't reach the handle. Uh, with this, you can control it really nicely, do all your edge work, and uh, get a project done a little faster, and you don't have to ask for a friend to come over or bribe your wife or, or kids. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, any other questions? You're still down? Yeah, no, it looks like, it looks, I'm not turned on. It looks like this came back up again. They asked, uh, I got one that popped through. I don't know if I have connection, so we'll just answer it real quick. Um, looks like we're, they're, they're asking what the maximum thickness you can do. If you're doing mild steel, it's 18 gauge, aluminum 16. Is your mic on? Oh, there we go. Michael, I had both of the switches turned off, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, the question that got asked was, what's the maximum thickness you can work with? I apologize, I can't type in here, but this tool is going to be able to do 18 gauge steel, 16 gauge aluminum, and uh, 20 gauge stainless. So certainly, you know, pretty much anything you need to make sheet metal on a car, you're going to be golden. Yeah, and this thing, because it is a, a heavier duty design that we have for this one, uh, you're not going to get the flex like you will with some of the larger uh, bead rollers that are similar to this design. It's a little beefier and you're not going to get that deflection that you might see. So it's, it's really easy to keep it nice and controlled even when you're doing 18 gauge or, or 16 gauge aluminum like uh, Scott mentioned. So uh, that's all I got for this. I, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for asking questions. As always, uh, if you have any ideas for future products uh, or projects that you'd like to see us do a, a live on, uh, definitely drop us a comment and we'll do our best. And uh, again, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll have a full length video showing this process, even the laying out of the panel and everything uh, coming up on our YouTube here soon uh, that you guys can watch, learn, interact with. Thanks guys. Catch you later.